The 2018 Suzuki Jimny was an instant hit because it combined go anywhere mechanicals with a sort of retro ish character for body shell. Suzuki couldn't import them, it couldn't make them quick enough. People loved this sort of simple, rugged appeal. Now, if you've seen this car before in previous episodes of The Late Break Show, this is my wife's car. If you want to know why we bought it, how we came to buy it, and all the modifications we made, I'll put links for those videos above. But there is a problem with the Jimny, and that problem is you can't buy it anymore. Suzuki had real supply issues, and there was a little bit of an issue with the emissions. So certainly in the UK, you can't buy this car anymore, and the residual values of these has become higher than ever before. So if you're in the market for a no BS 4x4 that's zero luxury, that's got a bit of charm to it and a bit of roughy tufty, where do you look? What's possibly on sale? That. Neva! In Russia, it means a crop field. This is a brand new car. This is the Lada Neva, the 2021 Lada Neva. Yes, it's so similar to this in many ways. It's slightly updated, but it kind of looks the same as all the others. And you can now buy it in the UK. And today, I'm going to give it a good, proper review. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. This has been in production since 1977, and it's still in production today, obviously, so it's outlasted communism. The great thing about it is it was on sale in the UK officially until 1997, and then a chap called Mark Key, based in London, personally imported them for customers around 2010, and then that stopped a few years back, and he started to do it again. I drove one of these 10 years ago on fifth gear, and did some green laning all the way across the country. It was one of the favorite features I'd ever done. You can order the Neva as a four door if you want, uh, kind of like the 110 Defender versus the 90. And in fact, the Jimny is rumored to be available as a four door coming soon, but that's not official yet. What is official is that that will be available as a commercial Jimny at some point soon in short supply, over 20 grand. But you can buy that as a van version if you want. It'd be cheaper than that. 1700 cc, petrol, uh, Bosch uh, electronic fuel injection, Fiat derived like it has been since forever, full size spare wheel, obviously, 85 horsepower, 129 newton meters of torque. The Jimny 1.5 litre uh, engine, fuel injected of course, petrol again, 100 horsepower, but almost the same torque, 130 newton meters, no full size spare in the engine bay and no jack in the engine bay. One thing I've really noticed about the 2021 Lada is the fact there's cavity wax injected in all the orifices, which you didn't get on earlier Neva, so it should be better rust protected. Very, very easy and accessible. You can see it's got an air conditioning pump. This has optional air conditioning. It's still got a normal steering box, uh, albeit power steering. There's a little flap of plastic or rubber here, and underneath that is the wiper motor. It's just so user friendly. Rara Rasputin, tough little thing. It's got air conditioning, it's an option. That's fifth, five speed, same as the Jimny, no sixth. So driving the Neva, I immediately know that the dashboard, I'm not gonna say it's more modern, I'm gonna say it's ever so slightly more curvaceous and has slightly newer switch gear than the 2010 version I drove. The engine is a little bit more advanced with its 85 horsepower. Uh, this dash binnacle I think is more modern as well. Obviously uh, we've got miles an hour in orange, that's one of the things that's converted when the cars come over from, from Russia. Uh, rev counter, temperature and then your fuel the gear stick is comically long. It's way, way, way over there, away from the driver. So you do have to lean out of your seat a little bit. And you've got two cigarette lighter sockets, two. 
electric windows are an option and this car has them there they are in this center contour and i'm sure these are parts been renault i reckon they're renault i reckon they're renault because when this car comes off sale in its original form it will be mourned by the russians in the same way that british folks mourn the loss of the traditional defender this was the first larder model uh, that wasn't based on a Fiat design. It wasn't a copy of a Fiat. This was ground up new using a Fiat engine, but everything else was unique to Lada. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's pretty good and interesting. I still think it looks great. So yeah, visibility is brilliant because it's got sort of 70s A pillars, dashboards very, very close to the steering wheel similar to the Jimny and definitely similar to original OG Defenders if you're used to those. The way that a lot of people would describe and the way I would describe the Neva's style is kind of anti-SUV style. This is absolutely bare bones 4x4 uh, and it, it gets its style from the function. It's just functionality. It's rough, it's raw, but you know what, actually, it's, it's very easy to drive. I remember last time the suspension, the suspension's definitely more comfortable and pliable than I remember. It's not as soft as the Jimny. Um, and remember, the, the Neva was coil sprung suspension, independent at the front from new, and it was not a separate chassis body car like so many of its peers, like the uh, Jimny and like the Defender. This was not that, this was a monocoque from new, which was a big deal. You can't out driving it, uh, wanting to put on a sort of Bond villain kind of accent. I should really be wearing some military surplus gear. It's a bit hot for that though, frankly. So yeah, there's, there's two seat belts in the back, four seats. The base model is this, the, um, the, the, the three door shell, it's a hatchback, really good sized boot. Base model comes with steel wheels, um, no air conditioning, uh, no electric windows, just wind-up windows. So if you want to, you can make this a true apocalypse survival spec, which I'd be tempted to do. I don't actually, I don't actually like it on alloy wheels. I feel like it's too Western. Mind you, you could go full on and you can order it with some hilarious options. Rifle rack, snow plow, these are all legitimate options tracked um, wheel conversion that's a nine grand option um, as i said you can order it as a police spec pickup where you need um, a firearms certification because it comes with a a, a rear mounted roof cannon <laughs> the gear knob is quite soft it feels like i'm changing gear with um with a star wars figure from the 80s and obviously the gear shift is quite a long way away oh and it doesn't come with the radio as standard which is why there's just an extra cubby hole there but what I love about it is you can see all the exposed screws you'll be able to work on this car and service this car if you so wished very easily the price of parts on the Nevers is so small uh, there's an exhaust system that you can buy a full exhaust system 75 quid on eBay and Mark Key the guy that will sell you one of these is happy to help source parts um, and, and, and help sort servicing. Servicing's simple. The seats, I'm convinced, um, I know they've been modernized apparently, I reckon they're Renault derived. And I like it. Deep foot wells, lots of leg room. There's no adjustment on the steering rake, which is a shame. The steering wheel seems to be a little bit bus-like. Brakes are really sharp. Brilliant. I'm sure that's Renault as well. This car starts at 16,995, so £17,000 on the road. But you can buy it for 11,995, so just under 12,000 quid, if you're willing to do the IVA yourself, which is the sort of independent verification exam. It's, it's not that hard, it's just boring and paperwork. And what you get for the base model car is you get steel wheels, which I personally think are the best, rather than alloys. You don't get air conditioning, you don't get electric windows, you don't get any tinted glass, 
but you do get obviously the rugged engine, um, the, the locking diffs, all of the 4x4 stuff, and it looks pretty much the same. Then you get this for £800 more, the Lux, and it comes with alloy wheels, electric windows, air conditioning, tinted glass. Uh, is it tinted? Oh yeah, it says tinted in the corner, so it must be. So that's £17,795 on the road. And then you can get the Urban, which I said before, comes with strange moulded deep plastic bumpers and, and, and horrible alloys. That's 18 and a half grand. Please do not buy that car. And then you get the black special edition, which you can add different colorations. Um, if you want, you can have body colored bumpers, um, extra fog lights. That's 19,300 quid. I wouldn't. But what I probably would consider is the camo spec, AKA the Putin spec, which is special camo paint, which you can order from the factory. Um, with an eight-week lead time. Most of these cars have an eight-week lead time. Or, and the Bronto, the Bronto is the, the best one. Four grand extra, gives you an extra um, lift on the suspension, gives you wider clip-on arches, gives you some, um, a couple of different uh, roof, roof, roof bars, I think, and a different color, and it actually looks really good. So you can order it Bronto with camo paint, and that is basically Vladimir Putin spec. So if you wanted to do your own IVA on the car, you can buy one of these for under 12 grand, I think. Uh, either as a commercial van, two-seater with just a van back, or like this. It's very tempting, I think. It's ULES compliant. So the dealer, Mark, lives in London, and he's confirmed that this is a ULES compliant car. Now, obviously that's amazing, really. It's remarkable. It sounds like uh, a Russian military exercise, ULES, but it's not. It, it's obviously the ability to be able to go into London without getting heavily penalised for emissions. Top speed of 90 miles an hour, which is about the same as the Jimny from memory. In 1981, uh, one of these entered the Paris Dakar rally run by a French team. They lightly modified it. The car ended up coming third. Third when a lot of fully prepped works rally vehicles don't make it. For a long time, this held the record of the, the car that's reached the highest known altitude. One of these got taken to the Everest base camp and survived. And they won't be like this for much longer. 2023, this becomes a rebadged Dacia, a duster derivative. But if you want a proper hangover from the Soviet era, but one that's actually quite jolly, I think. This is it. <clears throat> it's difficult for me to describe quite how rubbery, hot and rubbery, the interior smell is of, of the Neva on a day like today. It's extremely rubbery. Like, I uh, don't know, going into the, um, the storeroom of a diving club. This does have, as standard, ABS, and it does have, as standard, a driver's airbag in the seat, I think, for side impact. Ra ra Rasputin, lover of the Russian queen. It was a shame how he carried on. I would definitely order this with a rifle rack for no other reason than to put the kids hockey sticks in it and tennis rackets on the school run. I think in the same way the Defender, the old Defender is, has become an icon and become acceptable with all of its foibles. I see no reason why we shouldn't treat the Neva in the same way. Well, I would like to tell you that this is sort of Cold War-esque. I've spoken to some people who spoke to some people who know a good place to do some proper off-roading. We're in the middle of nowhere. We've got a quarry to ourselves. Come! My friend, come. My comrade, come on. Let's go, come on, come. Come for you. For you, this is easy. For you, easy. Come, we drive, we have fun. We have fun, we, we nearly hit the gate, but it's okay. Uh, it's okay, it's fun, you know? You 
you know, this is what the Neva was born for. It's okay on the road. It's okay in that sort of Jimny, old school Defender way. It's not as loll lollopy as those cars, I don't think. It's not soft. But um, this is what the Neva likes. Great axle articulation as standard. And kind of like, no, no technology, no hill descent control like the Jimny. Obviously no, oh, there's somebody's front bumper there. It's not mine. All I've got it in is low range. I've not locked the diffs yet. The front end of the Neva is very similar to the Neva that we know. Uh, ever so slightly revised plasticky grille, but it's not offensive, so it's okay. Obviously the Viking ship chrome badge and these indicators, which have always been up there, that look like surprised eyebrows. In fact, I think there's an emoji which looks like that. And the same clamshell kind of bonnet, which opens this way and metal bumpers with plastic end caps. So all the parts are so cheap for this car. So if you do ding it, it's really cheap, like really cheap. This is what makes the Neva so interesting. And usually, although it was a Soviet communist design, it was actually quite advanced for the late 70s. Monocoque body, so no separate body chassis, and independent coil spring suspension at the front. This one has optional underbody guards on it, and they cost about, I don't know, three pounds as optional extras, well worth having. See, this is funny, isn't it? The engine is quite, you've got to really like open it up and then it feels all right. Now this bit's a little bit tricky because this bit is some traversing, I think. I'm standard ride height. Oh yeah. Woo! Brambles. I don't know, if you buy something like a Neva, this is the kind of thing you probably will do. A lot of farmers like a Neva. I'm cocking a rear wheel now. Yeah, there we go. But remember, it's only just over 1,200 kilos. It's a light car. Now, Lada say they've improved this 2021 Neva. It's got slightly better headlining, like a real headliner board. And this has been redesigned. It doesn't have a door card anymore, as in a piece of card wrapped in vinyl. No, it's got sculpted plastic door panel with an area where there would be a winder handle if you ordered the base model, because you can still order it with wind down handles, which I love because it's future proof. Chair slides forward, you get into the back. Got two proper belts, look. Headrests. Do you know what? I remember sitting in the back of the previous Neva and thinking it was all right. And this is, this is all right. It's so high up. It's brilliant and very, very Jimny-esque. Look. I'm a pretty tall guy, six foot three. This is good. This is great. Gonna go around these trees. Need a good lock for this. That's the power steering. It just seems to kind of take it in its, just kind of takes it. That's a seriously big ditch that I've just gone round. Legend. I am legend. Well, it is, and it really is. Back into the larder. It's a hatchback. Uh, you can't open it with a button on the outside. You have to go into the driver's side and there's a handle behind the seat on the quarter panel, which is a little bit flimsy. And then you lift the boot up. And actually, it's a really good boot. It's a really good practical boot with a flat entry level. I've parked it at a jaunty angle because if you're a serious off-roader, you've always got to cock a leg just to show off-road prowess which is precisely what I'm doing on my own in a quarry. Um, oh, one more thing. 
When you go to close the boot, interestingly, uh, there is no grab handle internally. So you've got to just grab the handle, but it's so thin and simple because all the pressings, all the steel body panels really on this car are the same as they've always been. There's not really anything different and I kind of like that about it. This actually has carpet in the boot. There's no carpet in there. I wish you could smell it in here. It's extremely rubbery. Rubber flooring, so you can still hose it out theoretically. Um, this centre console is different. You've got electric windows here in the middle because this is the Lux model. And you've got heated seats in here in the middle because it's a luxurious model. Three gear sticks. This diff lock, this high and low, and then this is the main stick, which is quite a long way from the driver. And the seats, which are new, and I think they're from a Renault slash Dacia. In fact, I think that is, and that is, and that is. But the dash has been remodeled slightly. You know, we live in a world where cars like Audis are all kind of like, they're all kind of like that. You know what I mean? Q3. Q5, Q7, VWs, they're all kind of the same. And that's what I like about this. This is not a Russian doll, actually. It doesn't look like anything else. The only person in their right mind who's going to consider buying a car like this is someone that wants to be a bit different and understands the attraction of simplicity and utilitarianism and possibly is a bit of a prepper and thinks if the world's going to end, what am I going to drive? It's narrow like the Jimny, which means it can go through narrow lanes. Mid 30s MPG. You know what? If it's good for Siberia and it's good for the Arctic, it's probably okay for me. He says coming up to what looks like a swamp. <laughs> You've gone to the deep end. You've gone the wrong way, mate. All that. You've gone the wrong way. Johnny, you've gone the wrong way. We're in the deep end. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, this is not professionally shot. I'm, I've just crawled from the drivers to the passenger seat of the larder. Um, we are in the middle of a wading pond. And I thought I was going to go out the shallower way because it was starting to feel a bit deep considering we haven't had rain for a while but I think this is the deeper part rather than the shallower part so my plan wasn't a brilliant plan and that's the water there it's just about to come in oh, Johnny Johnny what have you done what have you done it's quite stressful actually. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, I'm a novice at this particular off-roading area and there isn't anybody here to consult so I'm going to be here for a couple of hours I believe until someone can come and tow us out. Um, it's not the car's fault, I think it's my fault for going to a place which is much deeper than most cars would go. <sighs> Perfectly innocent mistake, mine not the Neva. Look, you can walk on that and then it just drops off like like going into a swimming pool and i thought this was the shallow bit to get out of the wading area and i didn't want to take it i didn't want to take any chances i've got the footwells filling with water oh man so i think I've, there's no one around to get help so i'm gonna i'm gonna abandon ship and that, the exhaust is the exhaust is out of the the exhaust is out of the water, so that theoretically should be okay. I mean, look, this car can survive Siberia. This car has been um, to the Arctic uh, station where the Russian military go. This car's been to the Everest base camp. I like to think that we should be okay, he says. Anyway, 
Rah, rah, Rasputin made the wrong turning. He went and got himself stuck in the mud. Rah, rah, Rasputin, you bloody idiot, Johnny. Uh, whilst the situation here is not ideal, um, you can't take away from the fact that the La Deneva is just a brilliant, it's a brilliant cult vehicle. They've got such a thing for, it's unashamedly simple, bare bones, utility, kind of like Soviet era hangover. And that's what I like about it. Would I own one? Yes, I would own one. The Jimny you can't buy anymore, brand new. What else do you compare it to? What can you get in Defender World for 15,000 quid, 17,000 quid with a two year warranty? Not a lot. So in that respect, I think it's great. I think just treat it as a brand new classic car. That's the way to treat it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm hoping I can get this car out before sunset. Thanks for watching The Late Break Show. So was the Neva dead? No, of course it wasn't. We managed to get it pulled out by the guy called Darren, who incidentally mentioned that no car had ever made it through there, including a Unimog, which no one had told us about before. We drained the mats out of it, we took the plugs out, we span it over, dried the air filter, and boom, I drove the Lada home, no problem.